Forgot to start recording last week um, and it sucked. Okay, so yeah, today will be a work day. I'll break you up into larger, like three different groups, um, roam around, um, help you fix things on like small group size. Um, and then before that, I wanna do a little bit of a JavaScript um, tutorial. So I wanna get you thinking about JavaScript. Um, so this week we'll be finishing up project one and then um, next week will be all about starting project two. Um, so for this one, all you need to worry about is one interaction, just try to get one interaction done. And so that interaction can mean um, using um, like jQuery. So I'll, I'll show a couple of um, ways to use jQuery to have um, like a hover. You could maybe use um, a gallery. So let's go look at, hang on a second. And um, adding interactions is always fun, which is why there's just one for the first round. Um, okay. All right, where's my, where's my website? What's going on? It's Monday for sure. No doubt it is Monday. Um, so, okay, this looks terrible. What happened? No, share. This has no, oh, I know why, because I'm in Sublime. We'll just, okay, fine. We'll just get out of Sublime and go to the, go to where we should be anyway. Um, I guess I should tell you why that happened so that, so, um, relative versus versus absolute path um in files if i if i say um this ooh, why is that linked that's not that shouldn't be there that's crazy um okay so if i say go look for um slash css um it's gonna look for um the CSS directory that is exactly like in the server's like first level. So like, let me go to Chrome. So this is the PSU interactive media site. And so when it says slash CSS, it's, it's looking for it immediately after this, um, it's called the canonical name, like the pretty URL, it's looking for it here. So it's looking at for it at slash CSS. Um, and that is the, this is where it's finding that style file. If I had like a project in here, so let's say, so PSU interactive media, and then I have projects and I have project one. Um, let's see, gorillas. If I tried to um, <clears throat> like do a absolute link to this style sheet by saying slash style, <clears throat> it, it becomes um, no longer re relative to where the file is. So, <clears throat> sorry, so scratchy. Um, this, when it when there's no slash in front, it's looking in the same place as this index.html. So it's saying, okay, I know I'm here. You're telling me there's a file right in the same directory as me called style.css. So it'll point to this one. But if it if you put that slash in front, which will work locally, <clears throat> um, or yeah, may work locally with um, uh, Visual Studio Code, if you push it up to the server, it's going to be looking like for a, that file here instead of in the projects folder. So it'll be like <coughs> this one, which doesn't actually exist. So, whoa, that's something to like think about is this idea of like relative never has that slash in front. Relative also could be like, I need to get out of where I am 
and then go up like so let's say index is in like i'll just like break this for a second so i can i'll make a folder and i'll say pages and i'll put i'll put murdoch in pages come on murdoch oh i'm in sublime get to save as pages. So let's say I put Murdoch in here. Let's look at this Murdoch. So now in order to get to that style file, so I'll show you in browser, it looks like this because it's pointing to, um, it's looking for this file in the same directory that it is. And there's no, no there's no style in here. So it has to get out of this folder first. And the way you do that is doing dot dot slash. So that says wherever I am, go up one and then find style. If this was like too deep, I could say go up one directory and then go up another directory and then find style. So you can kind of move like up and down through this hierarchy. Um, and the dot dot slash is how you do that. That is from, um, from Unix, like, so when you guys see me doing all this weird, um, and also this is a cool site, so I'm gonna show it to you. Um, when you see me do all this weird stuff in here, this is um, Unix, which is like the typed version of moving around the finder. Um, so you just use commands instead of the mouse. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's, anyway, that's why that wasn't working. Um, I have it set up as like absolute path, um, which for larger projects is the better way to go. Um, but it's easier for you guys to just do relative path. Um, so this is John Rojas. I think I showed this in the beginning of the term maybe, but this was his um, project one. Um, and I'll tell you, he is, um, he told me that he like stayed up, he decided that he wanted to do web development like before he took the class. So he was learning HTML on his own. Um, and he said he would just like stay up all night and learn stuff. Um, and so when he came to the class, he had a pretty solid um, knowledge of HTML. And then by the end of the term, I think he was doing, yeah, he's got like a pretty good mobile um, design. Going. But yeah, super cool, fun project. Um, and I think he just had, let's look at the, I think these are, let's look at how these are made. Yeah, it's just layered images. I inspect. Some dogs are probably going to be loud. They've been really loud lately. Um, and then he's using animated GIFs. There's an image. There's the the words Murdoch. There's this div. What's in here? Oh, looks like he's got background image. He has two background images. So um, um, I'm glad that I looked this up. There's actually um, on the week five. Okay, I have to add it. Um, it's on the website. I've been like in the process of like doing the website and um, um, and week five stuff. So um, there's a bunch of videos and there is, oh, dang it, um, multiple background video. Good morning. It's totally Monday. <laughs> okay, YouTube. I just saw it. I had a multi background image. So you can actually have multiple background images um, defined. And interactive media. I'm going to grab the link. Multiple image background. Great. 
it's not showing up. Option two. Images. Oh my gosh. Okay, I give up. Multiple image. We want the video. Okay, I'm just going to add this one. 30 seconds. That doesn't sound right. Background composition. Okay. Um, all right, I'm posting this and then I'm moving on. So you can layer them and you separate them by comma, kind of similar to how, how you could add uh, multiple fonts. Um, I want that up here. And we five, okay. Um, okay, and so the, um, so let's talk about JavaScript and multiple backgrounds. Save. Um, I'm going to pull up Visual Studio Code um, and let's talk about JavaScript. So, um, why JavaScript? Um, so HTML and CSS are um, they're pretty static. They once they once your file loads into the browser, that's kind of it. You can't really like change things. Um, and so what JavaScript allows us to do is um, to go in and find find those elements. Like so, you know, everything is sort of built in a hierarchy. There's like the HTML tag inside that. There's the body. There's all the elements inside. Um, and all of those are um, targetable with JavaScript. So we can find them and say, when you click on a button, change this element in the DOM. So the DOM is that kind of um, that loaded part of your file, right? You load your file up into the DOM. It's kind of like RAM for your browser. Um, JavaScript lets you go in and pick stuff out <clears throat> and change it. So um, it is sort of a pain to do, let me close this stuff. Um, okay. I'm going to make a new folder JavaScript row. Okay, new file. Index. Okay, so um, I will just put my JavaScript down here so that we can have it all in the same file. Um, and then make things bigger. So, bigger. There we go. Um, so let's say I have a paragraph and I have, um, this is my um, starter text. I can use um, JavaScript to say um, document dot get elements by tag name. Uh, and I can see, I can say, um, find the paragraph. Um, and because I use jQuery so much, I want to make sure that I'm doing this right. JavaScript get elements by tag name, not class name, tag name. And then, okay, that's what I thought. Um, I need to say um, if there's like assuming there are more than one paragraph, this is saying I want you to get the first one. Um, and um, I'll talk a little bit about that in a second. <laughs> name am I? So I am, um, and then I'm going to change the HTML for it. 
So I'm going to say, OK, find the first paragraph and then change the HTML to be um, oops. I am the ruler. OK, so let's view this in a browser. That is not the page I want to view. There we go. Um, this is my starter text. Okay. Um, oh, and then there's all that you have to be, it has to be uppercase. Get elements by tag name, uppercase P. Okay, and of course, it is not working. Inner HTML equals, oh, I didn't equal it, did I? Okay, equals. And then it's just the text, right? Okay, I'm there. So this is how, um, this is how you might change stuff in JavaScript. Um, and what this is basically doing is it's like when this page loads, so it has this kind of starter, like default text. Um, but then as the page loads everything, it gets to the script and it says, okay, find inside the document. Um, and then JavaScript has this um, method called <coughs> elements by tag name. And then it says, find, find a tag name P. And for the first one, um, then find the inner HTML. So this, whatever is inside there, and then change it to, I am the ruler. So this is like happening on the fly. And we could, um, we could change this where it would only happen on a click. Um, and JavaScript has, where's the on click for JavaScript? JS events. Um, as you can see, I'm really JS on click. JavaScript on click my function. Okay, right. So on click. Okay, so um, let's say I only want this to happen if I click on a button. So I'm going to add um, a button. I'm going to say on click equals um, um, I'll call it click me. So I'm going to say function click me Let's see if I've done this one right. There's my button. Okay. So, um, if you can, you all check and see if you're um, muted. Um, okay. So when I so now I've got this like function around it. So now it won't happen when I load. It has to wait till I call this function. Um, so I've made a function called click me. And then I go find the stuff. So it'll only happen if I click it. So this is kind of what JavaScript gave us out of the box. Um, and this guy, John Resig, came along and said, you know, this is like so much. Code. And what if, what if I just want to change all the paragraphs? Why do I have to like get all this, you know, why do I have to do all this like complicated stuff to just like change all the paragraphs? So he made a library called jQuery. And jQuery, um, so I'm going to go to code.jQuery.com. Um, jQuery takes JavaScript and um, it makes basically makes it easier and faster to write code. Um, and so it is literally just a big file full of um, JavaScript. 
This is basically what jQuery looks like. So he's written all this code and this is an open source project. So a lot of people have contributed, contributed to it. It's been around since 2006, I wanna say. Um, and all this code, there's a whole lot. Um, it goes for days and days basically allows us to change the way we um, we write interactive code, um, interactive JavaScript code. So let's take a look at um, if I wanted to do this using jQuery, um, I'll just, let's see, I'll do another one. And I now I can say, I'll give it a class. So I'll say um, um, jQuery jQuery me, and then I'm just gonna have a button. Um, I'm gonna actually I'll give it a class called um, jQuery button. And now in the script, um, as long as I have that library, so let's go grab it. Um, I'll just grab this one. I'm gonna import that script above here so that we can use it. So basically we're saying, okay, here's all that jQuery code. So now you can take advantage of it. So now I can say um, in my script, um, you're gonna use, um, this is how I talk to jQuery. So instead of saying um, function, you say um, dollar sign curly brackets. That's kind of like, it's like calling jQuery into action. So I always say, hey jQuery, and then I'll say, um, find me a button called jQuery button. So I'm gonna call that class. I'm gonna say dot jQuery button. So I'm, I'm using similar language that I would use in CSS. And then I'm gonna say, um, when I click on it, so click, I want you to run a function. And so um, in click, I say function, and this is like a kind of um, standard function in JavaScript is function and then parentheses and curly bracket. So it kind of follows this, this pattern. So I say the function, inside the function, I want you to go find this paragraph. So jQuery, go find this paragraph dot jQuery me. And let's change the CSS um, and we're gonna change the color of the font to um, red when I click the button. So let's try this out. Okay, so if I click here, that will change um, that to red. And then this one, is the JavaScript one. So if I wanted to change it, this to, um, to inner HTML, let's do another one. I'll just copy this and I'll say, um, okay, when I hover, I want you to change the HTML to be, um, um, I'm some hover text. Um, and let's see, I think I have to like escape. Let's try this. Okay, so um, let's refresh. So when I hover, I get like a different um, different text. Um, I can also just do like if I mouse mouse over mouse over. And then mouse out. I think that's what they are. Mouse out. I'm not some hover. Not. This is my starter. I'm not. I'm some hover text. I'm not some hover text. So um, once you kind of get this basic pattern, which is like find the class or find, if it's an ID, you could say find the ID, like pound something, um, or find the, like I could change, let's see, I could change all of the 
paragraphs. So when I click on this button, find me all the paragraphs and then change all of them to red. So let's try that. Um, click. So now they're both red. So you can kind of like modify stuff as long as you have this, you know, this basic setup, this line, and then something inside of it to change. Um, you can kind of copy and paste and really um, make jQuery work for you fairly quickly versus like JavaScript. Um, there's so many little nuances that are such a pain to figure out um, that like jQuery kind of takes a lot of that headache away. It also does a lot of, not so much now, but it does a lot of um, browser fixing so that you don't have to worry about like behavior in different browsers where with JavaScript, you really used to, and you still have to, to some degree, um, worry about how your JavaScript is going to um, work on different browsers. So this is kind of like the basic jQuery pattern. And I wanted to do like a little demo in class about it. And then there's more videos um, that I'll just grab right now. So um, this, let's see. Where's week five? Week four, week five. Okay, so um, let's open this page. So I've got, um, oh, it was like the first link. That's fantastic. Um, there's a quick video on layering background images similar to what John had in his project. Um, the animated library is the one that we looked at um, last week where you can get your text to kind of bounce in or, or scroll in. Um, that uses jQuery. Um, and then there is the, um, there's like a little bit of, um, this is like that typewriter script where I'll show you it kind of like types out the text for you. And you could use, um, you can use it with any um, font doesn't have to be like typewriter. You could just remove the, I think it, yeah. So like in this case, like they are um, just typing out, um, using it to type out letters and you can have that, see how there was like a cursor. Sorry, I'll go back and pause. Come on. Okay. It, um, it has a cursor that kind of bounces. You can have the cursor there or not. So you can just have it like type out um, a string of text. So it might be a good way to add a little bit of interactivity for your, um, your headers. And then let's see what else. Um, oh, there is an image carousel and I made a video um, that has like really minimized code and I kind of walk through how to get the code to um, do what you want. So if you have um, in your project, you want to add a carousel, this video would be great. It's like 13 minute video um, that goes over um, uh, this carousel library called Slick.js, which um, also is kind of based on jQuery. It uses the jQuery library to build um, a um, like a slider um, uh, carousel slider. So there's that. Um, yeah, so yeah, basically this week is all about finishing up and um, and trying to add a little bit of inter interactivity using one of these um, libraries. Uh, there's a simple button animation using um, CSS animations. Um, and then there's an anima animating SVGs if you want to try um, taking an Illustrator file, you can save it out as an SVG. Um, so like, let me find my CSS animation or SAS SVG. Button animation. Okay. Scroll, scroller, squiggle, sunset. Oh, SVG demo. Um, so here's kind of an example. Um, it's just a really simple flower done in um, Illustrator. 
And then if you look at it, Let's turn off the, oh, where's the animation properties? There's a way to turn off animation and I always forget where it is. More tools, animations, there it is. Okay, so let's just turn it off so it doesn't drive us crazy, pause. Um, okay, so if we look at this, um, so Illustrator is going to like export out um, all this code and you can just paste like the file, you'll end up having an SVG file. So here is that SVG and you can just copy and paste it. So um, if you look at this, it's got um, its own style tag in here starting out. It has a fill, which is probably, uh, I'm going to guess the the red and this is probably the yellow. And these are just classes that are um, that I just named inside the Adobe Illustrator file. I just named the layers that and when they export they like give the layers these names. Um, and so then you get this like um, flower petal. And so this is just like it's a vector. I could just change the shape of this flower into horrific um, to, yeah, because I'm like randomly changing numbers, but it's basically math is making this flower and, you know, with more complex illustrations, like things will be super crazy. Um, but you can, you can now like target these. So they both have, this has an ID, this has a ID and you can target them in CSS. So let's look at flower petals and stamen. If I go to my CSS for here, oh, flower. Oh, there it is. I'm like, where's my CSS? So here's flower petals. I've got, I'm changing the color of the fill. Um, and then I've got, um, I'm saying on the, the, the box where the flower resides, um, I'm calling an animation on it. I'm saying to rotate it every four seconds um, and make it an infinite loop and make it a linear rotation. So it doesn't do that speed up, slow down thing. And then, so here's like where I'm defining the name of the animation. And then um, for keyframes, I'm saying, okay, here's my animation name. When it's at 0%, I want it to be at zero degrees. And when it's at 100%, I want it to be 360. So it's gonna take that 100% to um, to adjust. And it looks like I'm, I was playing with um, opacity. Let me look at that. I wonder if it, you can't see it um, because it's on white. I don't know. I don't see an opacity change on this one. Weird. Um, but you could like add some other um, change as you go. Um, okay, so, and then, uh, so yeah, I have this demo as a video up on, um, it's on the homepage and I'll also copy these and make sure they're on um, Basecamp. Um, okay, I am gonna stop sharing. Okay, good morning, everybody, to chat. Reverse button action to jQuery. Oh yeah, the mouse over mouse out thing. Um, okay, so let's see, I wanna check in with you all. Um, I know that like, um, Sean, I wanna to talk to you about fonts and um, did Naya make it? She's got Wi-Fi issues. Okay. Um, and Nicole, um, anybody have like hot, like super hot issues they want to cover ASAP? Um, otherwise, I'm going to try to make the rounds with everybody today and just do, um, just have a work day. Um, sound good? Cool. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm super sleepy. I'm going to keep drinking caffeine. And let's see, 
four, 16. Yeah, so I think I'm gonna do um, rooms of four. Um, and yeah, so if, you, um, if you're done with project one, um, like as far as the coding part goes, maybe um, start playing with um, some of these videos and try to get some animations working. Oh, one thing I completely forgot to bring up is that um, a lot of you had never got emails from uh, simple get simple form. Um, so if you just went through the motions of creating a form, um, that's fine. I might just give you my API key just so you can like see that it's working. Um, and I also sent them an email to just say, hey, like a bunch of my students never got emails back. So um, hopefully we'll hear from them. But um, but yeah, it was more like an exercise in um, trying out a new library and seeing if it um, works. And apparently their service is not working super great right now. <laughs> so um, yeah, anyway, there's that. Uh, what else? Um, yes, we are at week five, which is insane, really insane. Um, and there's a bunch of cool stuff happening um, that I'll also just like put reminders to um, in our weekly work breakdown. But um, there's one tonight, actually. Let me just look at that one because that one's like happening right now. Come on. Okay, to not tonight, Wednesday night. Wednesday night, uh, Mateus Kemeny Endowed Lecture Series presents Rick Griffith. So that's, it's Wednesday night, I did not know. But yeah, and then Thursday um, is Marisol Ortega um, at noon, um, who is a, it looks like she does, um, She's a first generation Mexican American designer, illustrator, and letterer living and working in Seattle, Washington. She's best known for her vibrant floral, flora and fauna illustrations that play with texture, line work, bold color, palettes, and organic shapes. Um, she pulls inspiration from childhood memories of visiting her abuela's house in Michoacan. Mich How do you pronounce that? Michoacan? Michoacan. Thank you. Mexico and the hikes um, she's always and the hikes she's always grateful her well-meaning husband Rob makes her take. <laughs> she's also been known to borrow color palettes from the afternoon art dates with her seven-year-old daughter and art director Ellie. Excellent. Um, client lists include ACLU of Washington, Glow Magazine, Publix, Starbucks, Panera, FabFitFun, Sunbasket, Lush, Microsoft, Amazon, Compendium, Papyrus, American Greetings, Bego Fabrics, Structures Brewing, Bilson's Brewery, Oisel, Oisel, Micro Unicorn, Woof Theater, Sir Kensington's, and Real Simple Magazine. Cool, that sounds super fun. I want to check out your illustrations. Um, and yes, and then Thursday at one, there's a listening session number two, movement for PSUGD. Um, and then Friday, there's our future works. Does anybody know what that is, our future works? Uh, I think, wait, I don't think so. No, wait, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> it's a BIPOC, oh, I saw this. Um, oh. Our future works, yeah, is coming October 30th. OFW is a community event connecting BIPOC college students and creative pros through a panel conversation and shared art activity. OFW aims to expand student networks and inspire possibility through the stories and experiences of guest creatives. Um, that actually reminds me one more thing I want to talk about. Um, this weekend, one of my neighbors, um, she lives at like Albina and Fremont. She, um, she woke up to find that someone had sprayed on her front wall um, Black Lives Splatter, um, which is really horror, like just horrific. Um, and the neighbors quickly got together and scrubbed it off. But um, I thought 
it would be really great to ask um, the graphic design community or just like the art community at PSU if they would want to do a mural for her. So um, I'm going to post something um, on the Slack channel that I'm just like putting that out there that if you're interested in murals or if you know um, people at PSU that um, do murals, um, yeah, just kind of like spread the word. I want to kind of get it. Um, I guess it's Halloween weekend next weekend, but maybe like within two weeks to go and just like give like just spread some love to her um, instead of just this horrible because like even though it's like scrubbed off it's like I want to just replace it with something positive so um yeah so that's a project that I want to get going so spread the word on that and also um the art opening that we had last week um for SETI went pretty well and um it's really fun so I will put the link to that it's a virtual gallery um that is inside of a like a 3d defunct mall um and so there's kind of artwork everywhere and um yeah that is on the study website okay so let's get cracking it's already like 9 44. anybody have things to share before we break into breakout rooms okay cool oh cool awesome that's great um, so Naya likes murals. Um, all right, I'm gonna break us all out and I'll probably come find Sean and Nicole first. Um, and then there's like a weird, the breakout rooms are awkward, but we'll, oh no, I think I figured it out. It's like hard to get you back in the room. Four participants per room. There we go. Whenever I like leave a breakout room and then I go back in, usually there's just the button that says join breakout room at the bottom and then it just lets me go back to the one I was in. Yeah, I think for people. one student they had to find it in the in more. Like it wasn't um, yeah. And that like once we figured that out, it was good. But yeah, it sometimes it's like down in more instead of just in the main thing. Okay, one, two, three, here we go. Wee! Ten. Hi, Lupita. Are you just, uh, you're frozen, huh? Or is that the, your picture? Or maybe you haven't moved. Okay. Um, 10, 20. Do I have to like, okay, to everyone. Maybe I should do this in order. Um, okay, so wait for everybody. They've got like 30 seconds. Um, 
hopefully you were able to get a little bit of um, feedback and advice from each other. Um, and just like, I don't know, talk to other humans is nice sometimes. Um, do, do, do. do I have any stories while we're waiting? Like what kind of stories? I don't like, you know, like, stories. <laughs> oh, I was going to say, um, so I was reading about how um, I, I've been watching news stuff and uh, um, apparently like because masks like don't like that people can wear masks and still get sick um, then like why bother wearing masks and so I thought well um, I'm just gonna like stop um, washing my hands and um, I'm not gonna get the flu shot and um, oh, I'm not going to wear shoes because I've heard a lot of stories about how people can get nails through their shoes. And so it doesn't guard against um, getting a nail through your foot. So I'm not going to wear shoes. Um, and also seatbelts, like seatbelts is another big one. Um, and I think that it's my right as an American to choose whether or not I should have to wear a seatbelt. And um, I've heard loads of stories where people have worn seat belts and, and have still gotten very injured or have been killed. So that's what I'm gonna do. That's my plan. Yep. Go, go all Florida out. That's, that's great. <laughs> Hi. Uh, yeah, I'll ask. Can I have coffee? Mm-hmm. Earlier yesterday, I was watching a guy, um, and so he's done it before. He's gone to Trump rallies and, like, trying to get um, the people's, like, opinions and, like, ask them questions that contradict their opinions. Um, and one of the guys, and this irritated me, one of the guys said that his business was doing great ever since Trump got elected, hence why he's uh, voting for him again. And then the guy asked, the, the questioner asked the guy, well, what do you do? And he's a debt relief person. <laughs> oh, God. And he said that oh, the I think I've seen was that. doing great. And I was like, that doesn't sound that right. Sounds great. <laughs> Yikes. No. Um, so crazy. Are there people still in? Wait. But I have my ballot. And I'm doing it today. <laughs> today. Yay. Yes. Um, yes, do it today. Yeah. I voted like last week. Right. I was like, Ooh. So I I was and uh, just like, I'm not sure if it's a homeless guy or just a sketchy dude, just always around like uh, the ballot like drop off. Mm -hmm. at Central Library because it's behind the building. It's not in front. Um, so I was kind of like skeptical, like, should I really go there or not? Or <laughs> I'm not sure if this man's going to attack me. So uh, yeah, I was pretty fortunate that he wasn't there, but uh, he seemed to give me like the creeps. Mm -hmm. So That's good. yeah. That's on voting though. Going to get out of the way. Couldn't yeah. I was so excited. Yeah. I, um, I like voted the, I went the next day like, and yeah. And I like, couldn't wait to, it's like, where are the ballots? Where are the ballots? Yeah. I'm excited to get a sticker. Yeah. I, you know, oh, I, my sticker. <laughs> I don't know. If, like, where do you get a real sticker? I'm sure. Yeah, where do you um, it really depends. I believe if you went to like a library drop off, they might have some. Um, I think you just have to ask for it. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Can I get my sticker that I voted? Cool. Oh, yeah. Huh, that's weird because over at the central library, they were just like giving out like um, your, um, your holds. So I didn't like see like anything about that, but yeah, know. I have to pick up a hold. So maybe I'll ask him when I pick my hold up. <laughs> um, and I also feel very proud of myself because uh, 
there's this woman in my writing group and I found out that I, I like snooped on everyone because um, there's like such amazing writers and I wanted to see their projects and stuff. So I snooped on everyone that was in this writing workshop that I did. And I found out that she's like a Fox reporter and I was instantly, I'm very left like, I, and I, and I'm trying really hard to be open, um, especially as a teacher, blah, blah, blah. Um, but so I found out she was a Fox reporter and I was kind of like, oh my God, like keep me, keep me away from her. She's, she must be evil, right? Cause there's this binary happening right now that's so strong. Um, and I was like, nope, just keep, keep it, keep an open mind. And, um, and we actually had a really good conversation this weekend about how um, she used to be, uh, she worked for NPR for a long time and then mm -hmm. CBS and then she, uh, she needed work and there was this Fox job and she applied and was like, oh my God, like, is this really happening? And um, then um, she ended up working for Fox and she has since become a Republican um, I think, I don't actually know what her political views are, but that her view of Fox and the media um, and being able to see both sides um, has been like pretty eye-opening and she's writing a book about it. Um, and I don't really want to know what her political views are because I don't want us to have, get into a fight, but yeah, it would be nice to be like, I, you know, I, I am open to hearing your opinions. Um, please just don't say anything positive about our current president because but anyway I felt very proud of myself <laughs> that we're having conversations um anyway so it is 10 30 um I want you guys to be able to work on your own I'm gonna stay right here um maybe I'll go coffee or whatever or a blanket because it's cold but um I am gonna hang out and um let's get project one done um I'm like crazy low energy today so I'm excited to work one-on-one -on -one instead of talking to um a bunch of people at once and that's what I'm gonna do and I'm working on the prompt and um the homework is Umoju um, Omoju Miller um it's an amazing talk she's so cool and she has this incredible perspective that's so different from um, the U.S. because she came here um, already a coder and then was like, oh, what do you mean coders are boys? Like, this is so dumb. <laughs> so she has this really amazing um, perspective. Um, and uh, the talk is just awesome. So, and she went on to do like a TED talk after it and all this stuff. Um, but this is through Etsy Engineering, which has um, really awesome um, talks in general. So that's the homework, watch her talk, and then do a little research on something that she talks about um, to just, you know, find an article, read up, and kind of enhance um, what she's talking about, or, um, or counteract it, you know, whatever you find, um, and what whatever you find interesting. Three to five paragraphs, so <clears throat> it's basically a short response paper. Um, and then quick question on project one, are we emailing it to you, or are we posting it in Basecamp? Um, you will post it in Basecamp, um, a link to it. Okay. I posted the project so long ago, I can't remember when I posted. Let's go look. Project one. Um, well, the due date is not right anymore. Um, okay. Um, yeah, I'm just going to say post a link. Um, this is, these are the requirements, but they don't actually say how to turn it in. So yeah, you'll, um, you'll post a link and screenshots. Um, so that um, in that folder, so I will update that right now. Okay. Um, yeah. And yeah, just get one interaction for now. Um, and we will um, Wednesday. Yeah. Keep doing stuff. I'll probably do a, a media query demo so we can start talking about like for um, project one um, and Kate, Katie, that might be good for you. And anyone else that's done with project one is to try to play with media queries a bit. So um, I might send a video out for, for those of you that are already done. So okay. start and then that. Anitra just asked, what is the new due date for project one? Yes, it is. Dun, 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 dun. I think it's the second, right? So today 
the 26th. So, um, yeah, before class on the 2nd. Um, okay. And on the 2nd, we're going to hit Project Too Hard. Um, because then, yeah. Um, Project 2 tends to go faster because it's we're sort of over that initial hump. Um, and then the faster we can get kind of that initial pass of Project 2, just the basic HTML, CSS, then the rest of the term we can add interactions to both 1 and 2, fix weirdness with 1, make more responsiveness with 1, um, and also have that third project if you don't want to, if you're like, I hate 1 and I don't want to ever see it again, or if you really want to do animation. Okay. Um, cool. Yeah. So November 2nd, which is crazy. Cool. Um, okay. So I'm going to like take a five minute break and I'll be back and um, yeah, work and I'll be here till 1150. Cool. <laughs>